you could spend your money on Cyberpunk 2077. Or Cyberpunk 2069. If that's still on Steam. Oh no, please tell me you're you're fucking joking. Is that a thing? No, but there's a there's a COVID 2069. <laughs> <laughs> You guys should be deeply ashamed. Not even a little bit. Mate, I've shit myself so many times the past these past three years. I'm not ashamed. God, this looks like dog shit. You want to look at something that looks like dog shit? Look up a uh, coronavirus battlegrounds. Oh no! Similar to games you played inside. Yeah, just like COVID 2069. <laughs> Oh my god, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why these types of games are worth like a buck. Because they're so tone deaf in what they're doing that it's just beyond horrible. So when anybody else sits crisscross applesauce, do their legs go numb? Like within a matter of seconds? I've never said that in my life. What, your legs go numb or crisscross applesauce? The second one. Why go crisscross applesauce? I always say crisscross applesauce. Like, I always sit up in my chair, like, uh, with my legs crossed all the time. But for some reason, my legs, like, I don't know if it's just because I have old body or fat body, but legs just go numb after, like, a very short, like, 0.87 seconds. And the moment I move my legs, I get pins and needles like it's nobody's business. I believe that is called bad posture. It might also have something to do with, like, the six pounds of metal in my spine. I didn't realize you had metal in your spine. No, I actually broke my spine uh, once. That was a good fun time. And then I had gone into a very extensive amount of time where I was dealing with pain clinics and stuff like that and getting injections and all that. And they're like, hey, you have a broken bone, but we're going to try to do everything we can to not fix your broken bone. And it was like a year-long process until they eventually did give me surgery. I've never experienced nothing of that at all. Oh, man, consider yourself lucky. Recovery was the worst thing ever. We should probably talk about something that's less depressing, like kittens. Uh, going back on the subject of crisscross applesauce, I've just had a quick Google search. It's usually followed by spoon in the bowl. <laughs> Excuse me? Is that when somebody dips their hand on your wiener when you're sitting like that? <laughs> No, uh, generally uses nursery school and primary school teachers to children, sometimes followed by spoons in the bowl, meaning hands on your lap. That's a lot better than what I said. Forget what I said. <laughs> I'm going to do that from now on. Every time I walk by one of my friends that are sitting crisscross applesauce, I'm going to stick my hand on their wiener and be like, spoon in the bowl. You just cup their balls? Yep. Being forced to sit crisscross applesauce for more than a few minutes can be painful and promotes bad posture. <laughs> oh. Well, oh, you're right. Shit. If you find yourself continually recriminating the class for not being able to sit during circle time, then it is time to move. Well, shit. I guess I've just been dealing with bad posture for 38 years of my 31-year-old life. Oopsie poopsie. I guess this lumbar support really isn't helping then. Wait, you got lumbar support? I do, too. Yeah, I got a lumbar support for my chair, and it's nice. Yeah, I, got, I just got a pillow. It's kind of stiff, but, you know, I can work with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with working out with a nice stiffy. Nope, not a stiffy. Not going to do it. Play with me. Come on, play in my space. I'm not <laughs> playing. I don't want to play in your space. Your space is weird, and it, it creeps me out. Oh, yeah, Banjo, did you look at the Australian koala horror movie? On the Discord? I did. The drop bear. If I ever find that or Fist of Jesus, we are all watching it one night. Absolutely. I want to watch Fist of Jesus so bad. I think I will actually be sent straight to hell if I do that. No, it's fine. It's just Jesus fighting off the zombie apocalypse. I think it has something to do with like the whole Lazarus story of like how he raised them from the dead. But then Lazarus turned into a zombie and started fighting a bunch of people and turning them into a zombies, zombies. And then he had to fight them off with Judas. That's like the knockoff Abraham Lincoln uh, vampire hunter. Yeah, but with Jesus. They made a knockoff of it, of Abraham Lincoln killing zombies. 
Oh, yeah, I remember that movie. I uh, actually found Fist of Jesus, the movie, because there's a video game based off it. You're kidding me. No, 100%. It's called Fist of Jesus. It is a side-scrolling beat-em-up game where you play as Jesus and you fight zombies. Well, God is truly and officially dead at this point. Uh, no, he, I'm pretty sure he survives the zombie apocalypse, so we're good. Is it really a movie if it's only 15 minutes long? Yeah, that's a YouTube video. That's what that no, is. No, even on Amazon Prime, it's only 15 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> what about Kung Fury? How long is Kung Fury? Not long enough. It's really not, dude. That movie needs to be a lot longer. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen uh, Black Dynamite? Black Dynamite. Sounds very familiar. The movie or the cartoon? I've heard of the movie, only seen the cartoon on Adult Swim. The movie is so fucking funny. Guys, there's a Kung Fury 2 that's supposed to be coming out. (laughs) And it stars Michael Fassbender, Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is the thing. Holy crap. Did you say he was a Fassbender? Hey. Hey. Dude, Michael Fassbender is a fucking handsome man. He is. <laughs> you think everybody's handsome. No, he is a very good looking man. You told me I was handsome yesterday. You are a very handsome man. I see that I see that changes every time. That doesn't change at all. I've never changed that opinion of you. You're a beautiful man. Yeah, I don't know. Does anybody else have tired brain today? Yeah, a hundred percent, dude. I literally just woke up from a nap, so yes. Oh, well, lucky you. Yeah, that must be nice. I don't have the luxury of nap. You don't have the luxury of nap or napping because you cut out there. So it just said, I don't have the luxury of nap. Yeah, I don't have luxury of nap. That is such a great game. You should buy it sometime. Luxury of nap. And then there's luxury of nap too. Nap's revenge. That could probably actually be a really good game if you just think about it. I don't know. What would you do, though? That's like Among the... What is it? Among the Sleep? From what I can remember, that game is you are like a child. You're a baby or something? Yeah. You're a toddler, right? Yeah. And yeah. then you have to go through all these scenarios and then you find out that your mother's an alcoholic and you see her as a monster. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. It's pretty sad. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Oh, I had no idea. Yep, that's... that's- what you find out, the monster that you're running from all the time is actually your alcoholic mother. Sweet Jesus, that's dark. Yeah, it's very dark. And this is a game that came out in, like, what, 2013, 2014? I'd say all the YouTubers played it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, all the hotter ones. Well, I figured everybody played it anyways. I played it for a little while. It was alright. I never delved into it. I just watched people play it for a little bit, but that's it. I played it on the 360. Oh, God, the 360. That takes me back. Yeah, it does. I had the uh, Halo version. Uh, Halo 3 version? Uh, I think it was. Yeah, it totally was. I actually had the uh, Xbox 360 Elite, the black version. Oh, okay. With mine, you'd push the uh, power button and it would make the uh, Halo ring sound. That's cool. I like that. So it was actually pretty neat. And then uh, everything was like the controller and everything was like themes and shit. I remember playing uh, on my 360 Elite and getting into the final level of Halo Reach. And then my uh, fucking Xbox red ringed of death on me while it was loading the final fucking level of the game. To be honest, I got that so many times on my old Xbox 360. But know how the version that came out in 2011, 2012? Like the like the one you could do the towel trick with? No, uh, the one I'm talking about, like it had a touch button sensor for the power button. Oh yeah, yeah, that's one I ended up getting in 2012 when Halo 4 released. Do you guys remember the towel trick? The what? The towel trick? No, I do not. If your Xbox gave you the red ring of death, you could wrap it in a towel, turn it on, and it would overheat and reset the processor. <laughs> So that you could play it for a little bit longer. Holy shit. Yeah, that's how people were getting away with the red ring. They would just wrap a towel around it, overheat it, and it would force the processor to reset. 
and then you could play it for a little while longer before it did no it again. Shit. That's some next level like MacGyver shit. And not MacGyver. That's MacGyver. <laughs> to be honest, uh, the trick that I used was make sure that the Xbox was turned on and then just like pull out the power cable as fast as you could. And just kick it. Kick it repeatedly. My mom got me one in 2009 for Christmas, but she changed it because my dad got me one. And at that time, I was staying with my dad. My dad was a cheapskate. He did not buy me a memory card, and he would not let me play the fun games. So I was literally stuck playing the childish games because he deemed them for my age because I was like 11, 12 at that point. Oh, my God. Do you guys remember memory cards? That's That was a long time ago. Remember the 8 megabyte? Yes. Remember the rumble pack for the Nintendo 64 in order to get your controller to rumble? <laughs> you had to stick like three AAA batteries in that thing. And then the memory pack you had to have to play Donkey Kong Country? Yes. Like uh, you had to get that, like the processor chip. And that was just to play Donkey Kong Country and Perfect Dark. That was it. That was the only reason. Those were the only two games that needed it. Since you guys were out well, alive longer than I have. What was it like buying a console like the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, and the first version of the Game Boy Advance, knowing that you had to buy batteries for it? It wasn't that bad. We were kind of used to it at that point. I was actually fucking stoked because my first gaming console that I had that was handheld was the uh, the Sega Game Gear, and that thing took six AA batteries. So what? Believe you me, when I was super excited when I got a Game Boy and it only took four, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I can play this so much longer. But I was also turned off because the Sega Game Gear actually had color screen and backlighting. It, and you didn't have any of that crap until Game Boy Advance came out. And even Game Boy Color didn't have backlighting. But do you remember how you got that little light? It was like a book light that clipped into like the link socket on it so that you could shine it on your screen and play it at night. It was so a piece of shit. <laughs> that's crazy just thinking about how far technology is advanced in gaming like holy crap you guys ready to do the intro oh don't you know it baby boy don't call me baby boy that's weird okay baby man all right daddy don't call me that stop it <laughs> <laughs> i am nobody's daddy welcome to the joysticks and lunatics podcast i am benjamin dude guy and i'm joined with baby boy and daddy yeah all right that's it i'm leaving <laughs> and I am Overpowered Peaches, not Baby Boy. And I am the Chubby Nerd Logan, also known as Daddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And today we'll be talking about the game that we discussed in the last podcast, if you listened to that, and it was Pokemon Spinball for the Game Boy Color. It was uh, Megacraft Hentai Edition. It was Nexomon. But which one? There are two of them. The app version. No, it's 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 Nexomon Extinction. I love Burping Simulator. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Are you okay? <laughs> yes, I'm fine. That was amazing. Do we need a priest? Do we need to exercise some demons here? No, just uh, go get go get the spirit box and then get the salt. Are we gonna have to put you at a door so I can open it and kill you? <laughs> <laughs> You mean uh, you hiding by the door and then getting your ass stuck on the nightstand and then having That to... was your fault. That was your fault. <laughs> For anybody I at home you. that's wondering, we're playing door. a lot of Phasmophobia and his dumb ass gets stuck in the door. <laughs> I told you, don't open the door. What do you do? Open the door. I tell you, shut up. You keep on shouting. I can hear you at all. It's not my fault. I could have survived... Yeah, but you didn't. I was the one that survived. I didn't survive because you you stood at the window and like, hey, you okay? Banjo, tell us tell us about this game. Fa Phasmophobia? Well, it's about no. ghosts. God oh. damn it! Oh, oh, you mean Nexomon Extinction? No, I mean the hentai edition of Minecraft. <laughs> yes, Nexomon <laughs> Extinction. So Nexomon Extinction is a video game, usually. I hope it is. That was it. That's, all, that's the whole thing. No, uh, it was uh, actually released earlier, not earlier this year, later on in the year, but earlier this year from this point. 
I'm confusing myself. It came out August 28th, 2020. It was uh, developed by uh, VWU Interactive. Am I saying that right? VWO? VWU? VEWO Interactive Inc. And it is part of the Nexomon series. Like Logan had mentioned earlier, there was an app game called Nexomon that is now released on Steam. As far as I know, that's the only thing that's released on. You can get it for five bucks if you want to play the beginning of the series, but we decided to jump into Nexomon Extinction. And uh, Nexomon Extinction has uh, far more platforms. It is available on the Nintendo Switch, the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Windows, Mac, wherever you get your podcasts. It's everywhere. So this game is a take on a monster catching game similar to Pokemon, very similar to Pokemon. In fact, that's probably the one thing that we should probably be uh, uh, referencing a lot in this game. Do you want to go back to old roots where you are scared for your life, figuring out are you going to be strong enough for the next battle? This game is more difficult than most Pokemon games as the difficulty curve just like exceeds if you do not know what the hell you're doing and if you don't know the fucking types. Because I don't know the types. All I know is water is good on fire. (laughs) That's it. That's the review. Water is good on fire. Just like with Pokemon, with Nexomon, there's a bunch of different types that you use, and there are different type advantages that you can have with the game. There's normal, fire, water, plant, wind, electric, mineral, ghost, and psychic. And each one of these has their own strengths and weaknesses. What is this game rated at? Uh, on Steam? Really any platform. So we're looking for uh, the general sort of reception and the rating that this uh, game has received. Oh, dude, it's received pretty well, actually. It's got a 9 out of 10 on Steam, 81% on Metacritic. It's doing pretty good as far as reception on the game. People seem to really like it. And this game is 40 to 50 hours long. Wait, really? Yeah, you can put a lot of time into this game for sure. Because I, when I when I look at this game, I compare it a lot to Pokemon, and I'm sure most everybody's going to do that anyways. But it's kind of a question of how many hours would you generally put into even the latest Pokemon games? Don't ask me that question. Well, if if you're uh, any anyone like my wife, she's put like about 140 hours into Shield. Apparently, fans can spend about 300 plus hours. Yeah, holy cow. Pussies, I've put for over 400 hours into Pokemon Shield. Oh my god, get a life, nerd. I'm a shiny hunter. Fans of these games can go through and they can catch as many Pokemon uh, as they can. Basically, just gotta catch them all. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, and... I know a lot of people that are listening to this may have uh, a pretty good understanding as to what Pokemon games are, but essentially, if if you don't, uh, a monster catching game is a game in which you uh, traverse the lands, go into wild areas, and find these creatures, the monsters in the game, and you battle them, particularly to weaken them, and give them status ailments so you, it makes it easier to catch them. When you catch them, you add them to your collection, then you can use them in your party to battle other monsters and other people that have monsters. And it's just a like a collection game. You know, How many of them can you collect? How many of them can you power up? Which ones are better than others in particular fights? It's like a rock, paper, scissors game, and whose monster is going to come out on top? So that's essentially what you're looking at with Nexomon. It's another version of that where you're just catching monsters in the wild, training them, powering them up, getting them more levels, getting them more moves, and then you're using them to defeat other people that have these or finding other ones in the wild, and you're doing that to progress the story. And the story in this one is a pretty simple one. This actually has a bit of a darker side to it, really, than uh, Pokemon. Pokemon is essentially a very lighthearted monster-catching game. And it's typically, I have to catch them, train them, power them up, and become the champion. Well, in this one, it's a little different. Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Fine, interject. Go ahead. Generation 3, eco-terrorists. Team Aqua want to flood the planet, but Team Magma want to dry out the planet. Generation 4, Team Galactic try to destroy the world that you're on with uh, Dialga and Palkia. 
basically the legendary Pokemon of time and space. So they try to create a new universe and basically Garatina drags Cyrus down into the distortion world, aka hell, and basically kills him. Generation 5, Pokemon Pita edition. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Gener- Generation 6, basically huge Pokemon war and then a huge cannon that comes out of France that can kill everything on the planet and every single Pokemon too. Generation 7, evil mad scientist freezes Pokemon, steals our DNA to create new Pokemon and basically gets obsessed with these weird dimensional aliens called Ultra Beasts and kind of makes her daughter look like one of them. Generation 8, Dragon. (laughs) Okay, so I, I get it. There are some darker tones to the Pokemon games, but essentially they're led by very incompetent individuals and they don't really succeed with their master plan. And I'm not saying that that's different really in Nexomon. Essentially, you get caught up in Pokemon. Uh, you kind of off the cuff get involved with these uh, bad guys and you basically take them out before the ultimate destruction of humanity or Pokemon as it were. But in Nexomon, it's essentially the same thing, but that is like the main story quest almost. So you become a a trainer or a tamer and you get Nexomon to do quests. It's not really your job to take care of these bad guys, but ultimately when you rank up the higher ranking people, it is their job to take care of these bad guys. So you're working towards getting to that position where it is your job to stop the bad guys. It's not just a, hey, I'm falling into this plot of yours, I'm going to foil it and then become the Pokemon master. It is, I'm training up essentially to destroy you. That is my job. And in this game, you get caught up in a few things. The reason why I say it's a little darker, because people are being actively killed. So you don't see any of the death on screen as far as I know with the amount of time I put into the game. But basically the story is, There was a Nexomon, like Omnicron, this big, bad Nexomon that wanted to destroy all of humanity and was ultimately going to do that until some really high-ranking tamers, these legendary tamers, basically turned his children, other Nexomons, against him in this epic battle to overthrow him. And they didn't just make him faint like in Pokemon. They just straight up fucking killed him. But... Along with this came these eggs, these tyrant eggs that people would actively search out and hatch these eggs. And they were giant Nexomon. And they basically, all of them that were hatched started this giant tyrant war to try to become the new king. And they don't care what's in their way, who's in their way. And they're becoming very corrupt with power. So they're holding towns hostage. They're just killing anybody that stands in their way. And you get to that point where you're basically having to fight them to stop their evil deeds and to stop the killing. It's pretty crazy. But the game is also very lighthearted because it doesn't take itself very seriously. And it's very meta. Like, it knows it's a video game, and it it plays on that a lot, a lot in the dialogue and everything. So it does a really good job of just saying, hey, I know that the story is a little dark, but there is a lot of humor, and we know it's a video game. It's not real kind of thing. So it's pretty interesting in that respect. I will admit some of the characters are very forgettable. Yes. I don't remember any of them. The only one I really remember is the one that is your companion. You have a traveling companion, whatever the fuck his name is. He's a cat. Coco. Yep, Coco the cat. And he's essentially only the most memorable one because he's with you everywhere you go. And he's he's a very fast talker. He has a very lot of snappy remarks. And he's probably the most meta character out of the whole thing. You know, because he's always making references to stuff and he's always shutting people down with stuff. And he's his dialogue is by far my favorite in the entire game. He actually makes a reference to the character a little bit later on where he says that she or he, depending on what you choose, is a mute. So just like in a lot of games where they give you a blank slate character, you can impress your own sort of person onto they make a reference to that and just saying that this person just can't talk 
it's not that they're talking and you can't hear them talking like in game. It's just that they can't talk at all. Yeah. And I love that. So there's a lot of meta chef stuff from Coco. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Like when something happens, they're like, well, that never happens. And he's like, obviously you've never played an RPG before, you know, making direct reference to the game. It's, it's lovely. At times that can get a little bit old, but you know, there are some moments where it is pretty funny because he makes some really snarky comments. I will admit, I do love the subtle hint to Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening as soon as you get your Guild Tamer badge and everyone's just staring at you and like the receptionist just goes, please never do that again. Yeah, the, the part where she gets the badge and then she runs out, holds it in the air and everybody's staring at her. They're just like, what the <laughs> fuck you did? <laughs> For this game, the people that developed it, was there anything else that they developed besides uh, the Nexomon, the first Nexomon game? Uh, let me take a look-see. Detective Logan is on the case. Vivo Interactive has only done the Nexomon series. That's it. Yep, that is 100% their entire catalog is Nexomon and Nexomon Extinction. But Banjo, you're going to love this. The publisher that is the same publisher, Cat Quest. Oh, yeah. P-Cube. All right. Yeah. P-Cube has done some uh, pretty good games. They've actually uh, published quite a few games that I really like, like Blaze Blue, Calamity Trigger, and Cat Quest. I really, really like Cat Quest. That's definitely one we should play on the podcast sometime because it is really <laughs> fun. Time to go to Steam. You're not allowed on Steam anymore. Why? Yeah, you've ruined your privilege. You are banned from Steam for buying us that really horrible Minecraft clone. <laughs> <laughs> so how much time did everybody get to put into this game? I'd say two hours, but I was talking to Peaches beforehand when you tell about your experience. I'm going to tell about my experience when I streamed it the first time, and I went in the complete opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you're supposed to go east. You're supposed to go east to the Outlands when you first start this game. But apparently... I went to the west. <laughs> yep. He went to the beach, I think. did it? Was it a beach area? Yeah, and there was like so many weird-ass quests. Oh, man. The quests are like the best. Why are most of the quests just trading stuff? I was wondering about that too, but I think that's maybe it allows you to get somewhat of an advantage. There's also some things that also play a part when it comes to giving you an advantage because at early on in the game, after you get your first Nexomon and stuff and you have to fight off a dragon, you get a, uh, a pickaxe, which allows you to mine for gems, which can later be used to create elemental Nexo traps to catch Nexomon of a certain type. Or you can get them to synth uh, make cores that you can equip to your Nexomon to increase their stats and stuff. But uh, one of the things that you can also use your uh, pickaxe on are there's these purple-like crystals that stick up out of the ground. And when you hit those purple crystals, they restore your whole party. So they're almost like one-time use health centers that you can use to restore the stamina and the health of your Nexomon. And at one point, uh, there's a, somebody that you can talk to that tells you about them. It says, yeah, if you use those, it'll restore them. And then Coco remarks, I wonder how many people had to complain before they put that in the game. And I remember the first time I actually played this game, I played it on the Switch. Those were not there. So that had to have been a recent addition to the game. And because the game is pretty unforgiving, like at the very beginning, you are not powerful. And it does a very good job of letting you know that. I actually disagree with that assessment completely. Uh, so I chose Noki, which was apparently the weakest Nexomon. And the very beginning of it, yeah, you do get demolished by the dragon that comes in, but that's mainly a part of the story. Eventually, with enough grinding and enough experience gaining, I was able to pretty much demolish anything in my way to the point that type advantage didn't matter anymore. Very similar to the way that I've played Pokemon. As soon as I get my main Nexomon up to a certain level, 
I am able to just use the same attack over and over and over again, even on stuff that it shouldn't, the type advantage shouldn't like allow me to do that much damage. It's just because my Nexomon is just at such a high enough of a level. Like when you say it's not forgiving, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, you actually reach a point where it becomes like you can just one shot anything with whatever one that you have. But at the beginning, grinding you have to find very specific locations to grind because otherwise you find yourself running all the way back to a health center to heal up or yeah, going through potions and okay, so that's uh, what you meant. either like nobody's business. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, okay. but, and also the game tries to balance the grinding a little bit to a point where what's the word it's, it's a, it's a word basically where you, as you progress through the game, you you're not going to go back to an area that you've previously visited to fight level three, level four Nexomon. They level up the wild Nexomon in areas uh, as you level up. So as you progress through the story, it makes all the Nexomon in the game a certain level. And when your Nexomon reaches a certain level above whatever level that all the wild Nexomon are, you actually start receiving less experience in those battles. So it tries to keep you at a certain power level. So you're not walking through with a level 100 Nexomon right away and just erasing everything in existence. You actually have to switch out your party members and try to level them up with each other. And in order to get them past a certain point at a decent rate, you have to progress the story. So if you go back to the starting area after you've gotten, say, as far as I did in the game, all those Nexomon are like level 19, level 20 at that point. And it, you can't just power through all of them. Sometimes you actually have to fight with some of the Nexomon you have. But then again, you also probably have that one Nexomon that is insanely powerful that you can just blast through things that it's nobody's business. And one thing that is a little different about this is you don't get experience share traditionally in the game like some of the newer pokemon games they ultimately have an experience share where if you fight in a battle with one of your pokemon you level up all the members of your party all your members of your party will receive a certain amount of experience and you can level them up so if you get a very low level one on your team you can level them up uh just by proxy in a battle so that you can make them more useful later on in the game but this game doesn't do that right away and it's you constantly having to switch out your Nexomon in battles. And sometimes that can be very deadly because you'll have a really weak one at the start of your team just so we can see battle for a second. And then you'll swap out to one of your other ones and then they'll take a, a critical hit or something and they'll lose like half their health right away. And then you find yourself running to a med center and it can be really frustrating unless you get a certain item that actually lets you uh, level up through experience sharing. This game does have something very similar to that, uh, but it is a Nexomon by Nexomon basis. And ultimately, uh, so what I had mentioned before was the pickaxe and how you can collect shards. Well, once you reach the main city, there is a laboratory in there that you can exchange shards for cores. And that's one of the things I really like about this game is each Nexomon has four... I open slots, I guess you can say, that you can plug these cores into them and make them more powerful. You can increase their their attacks, you can increase their defense and uh, evasiveness and all that stuff by just equipping these temporary items to them, similar to the held item in Pokemon. But one of the things is an experience share. It's called the synthesized core. And you can give one to one of your Nexomon and he will receive a certain percentage depending on the level of core you've given them from the fight that your active Nexomon has had. And one of the things that I had done is there's actually a core that increases the active Nexomon's experience. So I would give them a couple of them high level one of those so that they'll be receiving 50% more experience in battles. And then I gave another Nexomon uh, for synthesize cores level three each giving 25 percent, so they receive a hundred percent of the experience of my active nexomon who is receiving bonus experience so i was just power leveling my team <laughs> yeah um another item that you get is the um 
Like you get experience cores, but they don't go to a particular Nexamon. They just stay in your inventory. And the more that you collect, the more experience you can get from each battle. Do you get those through quest trades? Uh, quest trades, you find them sometimes. You know, there's a variety of ways to get them, but they just sit in your inventory. And I know you haven't, I don't believe you've mentioned the the whistles yet, but they're very similar to the whistles that, as you collect them, they'll just sit in your inventory and they'll just, you know, they'll give you more experience. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot those were, any, were a thing. <laughs> the whistles make it easier to catch particular Nexomon. So the, and you can stack them, too. So the more whistles that you have, the easier it is to catch the different Nexomon out there. So you don't always need to have the type Nexomon traps Sometimes you can just use a normal one if you have the uh, right number of whistles in your inventory. And yes, you do get those through uh, what is trading quests and other variety of quests and sometimes main story quests. Make sure to go in and ransack everybody's house in order to find food and different items like that too. So you can just go in and just steal their shit and run out. There actually was a reference in the main town where you walk into someone's house and they're like, what are you doing in my house? Get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> and then you leave the house and then Coco is like, what do you think you're doing? You don't have enough like reputation to just be walking into people's houses. You're a stranger. What do you think you're going to do? Of course, you're going to get thrown out. But like I was saying, uh, quests, quests are fantastic in this game. That's one of the things that I would like to see more in other like games like this. But there is an abundance of quests. And sure, a lot of them are trade quests. You know, give me these items for these items. But some of them are actually quests like deliver this to somebody else in this area to receive this item or go find this lost child and everything. And they are optional quests. They have no impact on the story and you are not obligated to do them in any way. But by doing them, you increase your reputation and everything. You also increase uh, the items you get. Sometimes you get special items that you wouldn't normally get any other by any other means. So it's very beneficial to do those quests when you get a chance to do them. And they're everywhere. I don't think I logged the most amount of hours in the game, but I'm pretty sure I may have advanced the furthest in the story. Yeah, because I actually got 11 hours into the game, but I didn't get all that far in the story. I was mainly just going around and grinding and just leveling up my Nexomon in order to demolish anything that got in my way. What about you, Logan? How far did you get in the game? I literally just got midway through the first guild quest with that miner, but the first time I played this game, I was streaming it, and it was like a few days after it first came out because my friend was like, "Oh, Logan, you should buy this." And I was like, "Oh, okay." I'll... It's like it was thirty pound physical, but like on the Nintendo eShop, it was like twenty. So I was like, "Okay, I'll just see how much it is on the PSN store." Ah, oh, it's sixteen pound. I'll buy it there. So. Bought it, and then I I have this like bad habit of not paying attention to things, so I wasn't paying attention to the story, and I was like, okay, where the fuck do I have to go? And my instinct is, go left. <laughs> so I did that, and then I ended up at the beach, and I met a few characters that I think you're supposed to meet or later on in the story, because I did not have any of that they were like looking for. And I even went south at one point and I was wondering what the fuck was going on and I met a ghost. Like, a ghost that wanted me to know his Bowser history. Oh, yeah. I totally got that quest too, but I was much further in the story. I was actually there where I was supposed to be in the story. And you just kind of ran into him off the cuff? Yeah. Like, I was just exploring. I had no idea what I was doing. So you didn't actually progress the story that far because you were just off in Wonderland. No, but I did run into like a lot of fucking characters, though, that I I believe that I'm supposed to meet later on in the story due to the level of Nexomon in that area. What were they, like level 20? No, I think the Nexomon are like supposed, like no matter where you go, the Nexomon is always supposed to be around the level that your Nexomon are. But it's the uh, trainers that you have to go up against that have like high level. And I came across like a roadblock 
of saying, oh, you don't have your guild badge, you can't come here. And I was like, okay, where the fuck am I supposed to go then? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, when I seen that bridge, like, you know how the one with the hole on it, I, my immediate thought was, during the first time I played it was, okay, I cannot cross this. Because in most RPGs, if you see a hole in the bridge, it doesn't let you pass. But nah, I went to the side and then I scooted along the hole. That's all you have to do. And then you see a couple of kids playing jump rope on a support beam of the bridge. I I fucking know. (laughs) But I will admit, I have gained some favorite fucking Nexomon throughout the playing this game. Well, I have four favorites so far. How many Nexomon did you catch in total? Well, I caught everything that I ran into. Like, if it was new, I caught it. You were on the collection quest. Yeah, pretty much. So far, I've caught about 38, I think. I've caught 17. That's because you two don't really catch. You're just, like, le- like leveling up. No, I did both. I did both. I I did two, but... Okay, so the Nexomon, on top of, you know, being in the wild and everything, they have uh, an indicator on the side that'll say common, uncommon, rare, mega rare, ultra rare things and i would only catch the ultra rares or the mega rares in that area so i was like just murdering all the common uncommon rares or whatever but if as soon as i saw mega rare on there i'm like oh yeah you're mine and that's what i would catch (laughs) so i would only catch like the rarest of the rare next month so i only have like 17 and i i think that that plays a little bit into their strength too because as i was playing I, I did catch one uh, uncommon. It was like the little skunk Nexomon. After I caught him, I caught like a mega rare, and the difference in power was astronomical. Like my mega rare Nexomon was just obliterating everything, and my skunk, my skunk just kept dying. I just came up on it. I just released it. Well, uh, so what's everyone's favorite Nexomon? My favorite Nexomon. Okay, so I had a team of. Six, of course, just mega rares, ultra rares. I think my favorite one was Devet. It was a psychic type Nexomon, and it's like a almost like a fairy kind of thing, but she is singing and she has like these wings behind her, but they're not wings, they're like speakers almost. So she just kind of blasts her voice out and uses psychic energy. I think maybe she just sings so terribly it just causes mental damage. But she was like my most powerful on my team. Uh, out of all of my Nexomon that were like anywhere between level 22 and 24, she was level 30. And that's because she was just like one hitting everything. It was just insane. So she was my highest level Nexomon as far as I've gotten in the game. And she was level 30. I also had a ghost type one named Grado, which uh, looks very, very similar to that. Um, the Pokemon Cafagrius. The one that's from Sword and Shield, the the Rune one, Rune Agrius or whatever its name is, it looked very similar to that. It was like in a pillar, but it had its little ghost body sticking out of it and everything. So at one point in the game, you can do a side quest, which I thought was pretty funny. It was essentially you battle this guy that's talking about how he brought ancient Nexomon back to life, similar to in Pokemon where you can take fossils and get the fossils turned into Pokemon that existed a while ago. And you battle him. And then afterwards, he's like, did you like those Nexomon? You're like, yeah. And he's like, well, you can catch them because they've all escaped. And (laughs) he gives you a charm that you can use. uh, As long as it's in your inventory, you can encounter these Nexomon. You cannot encounter them unless you have this charm. So you have to do this quest for them to appear. And there's one of each type. And they they all exist uh, in the wild based on their location so you'd find like the psychic one and the ghost one in the psychic and the ghost forest kind of thing you'd find the uh the wind one on dragon island and so on and so forth so i actually ended up catching a good uh six of these guys and they basically make up my party it's minus one because i still have my starter in my party and your starter was get coco yep get coco and i had it leveled up and it evolved to its second evolutionary form at like level 22. And it's called like Camilovo or something like that. I'm really bad at pronouncing, pronouncing these things, but he's essentially a derpy lizard 
uh, that shoots out electricity. He's pretty cool. I like him. He did it. He did his fair share on my party until I got the other next month. So now he just kind of sits in the back staring at me with his eyes that stare into my soul. But <laughs> yes, <I'm laughs> like... so as far as the story, like I said, I had gotten the furthest in the story. And when you first get into the main town, you get your, your tamer badge, your guild badge, and you're a bronze tamer. So it's like the lowest level that you can have uh, in, in the guild. And as you progress the story, you ultimately rank that up. And I had gotten to the point where I'd become a silver tamer in the guild. So, and like shortly after that, I took a, took an airship to the dragon Island and that's where I'm at. And at this point I have defeated two tyrants in the story. So as, as you progress the story, of course, you're just knocking down these tyrants but you also have an item in your inventory. I don't know if anybody else had received this. Uh, I'm pretty sure Peach has had because he said he was in the ghost store, uh, the ghost forest actually due to the story and not just from exploring. It's that weird, like lump of shit. <laughs> it yes. looks like it's a, weird, it's a weird lumpy rock. Yes. But you haven't figured out what that is, right? No, I haven't the foggiest idea what the hell that's supposed to be. Do you want me to tell you, or do you want to find out on your own? I think I want to find out on my own, because I probably will keep playing this game. You are very, very close to finding out. Do you think the orphanage leader just, like, shit in his hand because he was like, here you go. (laughs) Yeah. I got something for your parents. I misplaced it, but it's right here. This is it, totally. (laughs) There you go. That's the weirdest (laughs) thing you've ever said. This this item that you get, as you progress through the story, you take on abilities, and those abilities let you control certain elements so that you can progress further in the story. Like, after I defeated the Fire Tyrant, you get the Fire Power, and you can use that to stop Pillars of Fire or to melt ice. They're essentially treated almost like your, your HMs or hidden machines from Pokemon that let you do cut and surf and things like that. You gain those abilities so you can have more interactions with the world. Peaches, what's your favorite Nexomon? It's Noki because I leveled, uh, they evolved. I don't remember what the evolution is called. And then I was just blasting through everything. Like I'd face off against like maybe level 15s or something. They throw out a, a Nexomon. I just hit it with a water bomb. It die instantly. They throw out their next one. I just just breeze through the, all of it like that. And what I would do is I'd got the perfect strategy. I'd give all of the like six experience shares that I had to one low level Nexomon and just take out like these level 15 Nexomons. And I would just power level all of my uh, characters up really quickly and then i was just demolishing everything so it's really fun to just breeze through but yeah noki noki is how i did that uh my my favorite water bird uh that is a cool thing that's also about the game is that the starters aren't exclusive to the starting of the game you get like nine different starters that you get to choose from and you can catch them all in the wild too they're they're ultra rare but you can catch ultimately all the starters i have Two favorites. Obviously, the first one is Leechy. Roxas, away from the power button. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, the first one, I'm not sure why. I was just like uh, drawn to it because it's like it's a bat with a hood. With its tassels? I thought they were nipple tassels for a little bit there. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a very fluffy version of the Pokemon Gligar. Oh yeah, it totally does. With the pose and everything. And my second favorite is the water crocodile called Cruff. Imagine Zoro as a thief but a crocodile. That's the only way I can put that. Yeah, it's essentially like a like a, a thief version of Croconaw, or not Croconaw, Totodile. It's a water version of Crocodile from Black and White. Oh yeah, 100%. I love its final evolution. It's just called Domigator. Oh yeah, I know. Hey, he, he, that's, looks like that's he's in Banjo's nickname. 
<laughs> what is that nickname to his wife? Domigator. <laughs> oh, no. oh, God. That's not where I was trying to go with that bit. <laughs> I really wasn't. Yeah, he, he looks like he's into some serious BDSM. No joke. And so do you. 100%. So uh, should we play the first Nexomon game? Because the Hell starters no. look so weird. Hell no. <laughs> this is the only Nexomon <laughs> game I'm buying. I really enjoy it. It's a pretty fun game. Now, we don't usually do this, but uh, were we going to give reviews on it? I was just going to say play it. That Nexomon sure was a fun game. Yeah, it was a fun game. Uh, my wife already beat it. <laughs> what? Wow. Really? Yeah. She freaking played the whole thing and she she beat it. She kicked that game's ass. She got way into it and she actually played with me too. So we didn't play like online. I just played it on my computer and she played it on the Switch. I actually don't think you can play online now. Huh? I don't think there is an online for it. It was a good game. We are moving to another Monster Catcher game. Yes, we are. That upsets me that you called it that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I used to I used to play this one too. It's fun. No, you didn't. I hey, I watch the cartoons just like every other kid. It's anime. It's a cartoon. It's anime. It's cartoon. Was it on four kids? Yeah, it actually got dubbed by four kids. Oh, yeah. So it's a cartoon. I hate you. (laughs) (laughs) The uh, the four-part drama series known as Digimon. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, what, uh, what game, what Digimon game are we playing in the next podcast? The Digimon game we shall be playing is the hit PS Vita game, Digimon Cyber Sleuth. That was a PS Vita game? Yeah, I actually released in 2013 in Japan for PS Vita. Really? Like, everyone complained that Digimon doesn't get a Western release, so they were just like, fuck it, release it on PS4. And then, a year later, it got taken down off the PSN store, just like Cyberpunk. Oh, ouch. I wish I was joking. Well, we can't, we can't mention Cyberpunk, because... Well, I guess we could mention Cyberpunk, couldn't we? Because technically this would be... Re- I, I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm thinking back in time. Okay, never mind. Back in time for when the dinosaurs were... Back when I was born. And when I was a child. We back in my uphill. day. Oh, we didn't have Digimon. We had Analog Mon. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't have no Google to find born. We had to use magazines. It was analog, goddammit. We had dial tone. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have clucks. We had sundials. Okay, Grandpa, calm your shit. <laughs> My shit will not You don't cold. tell me what to do. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> okay. Let's, Who okay. am I? Uh, we're playing uh, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Now, the thing is, we have the complete edition, and the complete edition has both versions, or both games, right? The first and second, and I totally knew that 100%, and nobody told me that after the fact. And you're able to access uh, Digimon from both games. Can't you do what in the home now? Uh, in the complete edition, you're able to access Digimon from both games, so you're able to send the Digimon you have from, say, normal Cyber Sleuth to over to Hacker's Memory. Oh, is that not something that you could have done before? No. Oh. So what version of the game do you have? I have the PS4 versions. <laughs> I've got the computer versions. And the computer versions are kind of funny because when I started it up, it started it up in like a significantly lower resolution, and it was also completely in Japanese. What the dub? 
and I mean everything. And no, I did not pirate this game. I got it off of Steam, like legit. It's just that everything, though it wasn't dubbed, it wasn't subbed for some reason, the default was set to Japanese for both the words like spoken and written. So I had no idea what to do. <laughs> that is fan- fantastic. I had to just basically click buttons until I was able to change the the English settings. I'm surprised that you're actually able to do that. Oh god, you you did not see the failed recordings that I that I had with that game because I was repeatedly trying to get the fucking thing to work. The resolution was off. I couldn't understand a damn thing any but any like anybody was saying. I was like, God damn it. You fucking oh, made no. me buy this game. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that, you monster? You digi monster. But I'm a, I'm a, like really looking forward to playing this game. It, I don't know shit about Digimon. I watched a movie where there was a guy who hacked people's toasters and threw them in bathtubs and stuff. And then there was another big guy that shot his balls at people. And um, I'm pretty sure that was all one movie. Yeah, it was. Maybe I was on the wrong side of the internet. I don't <laughs> no, know. No, that's all that's one possible. movie. Uh, basically, there were three different movies in Japan, but, you know, they were kind of dubbed all into one because the movie was supposed to showcase the second season of Digimon to show kids what they're in store for for the next series. So, oh, yeah. I see. Uh, so, it, were, were, they were movies released out in Japan were they really short or did they cut yeah, out a lot of stuff? they were really fucking stuff? short. Uh, oh, okay. But four kids did, you know, take out a few things because, funny enough, the actual, like, digital movie altogether subbed is, like, two and a half hours, but, you know, four kids. You're not allowed cleavage. You're not allowed swearing. You're not allowed animal abuse, but they're allowed Pokemon. That is true. But then again, they also said uh, rice balls were donuts, so I guess it was all good. We don't talk about that. You knew that, right, Peaches? What? How they, they ate rice balls on Pokemon, like, with four kids, and they called them donuts? Yeah, they called them, uh, it was Brock's Jelly Donuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. That was fucking great. There's a guy on YouTube that I like to watch, and he made both versions, both the rice balls and the jelly donut version. Weren't they just the same thing? Uh Am I just saying that to like someone who's Japanese? Oh, is it donuts and rice balls just the same thing? <laughs> they I are. You... Never go to Japan. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. You guys ever had mochi? No. So it's essentially like it's almost like a rice ball, but it's like a like a rice like rice hard shell kind of thing, but not like not like a hard shell. It's a soft shell. It's like a gummy gummy rice shell, and then there's like jelly or something on the inside of it. But in the stores that I live around, they sell mochi ice cream. So the inside is like uh, cookie dough ice cream or something. But then the outside is a flavored rice gelatin. And it's, oh my God, so good. Only ever heard of it. Never had it. For one, Scotland doesn't have weird shit like that. Oh my God, you gotta, you gotta has it. You gotta has it and put it in your mouth. Yeah, and you've got to have free healthcare, but look what's happening. <laughs> that is true. That is not fair. <laughs> Hey, at least we only have to worry about obesity. We don't have to worry about walking to the supermarket and getting socked in the mouth. That only happened to me once. What else can we <laughs> say about this? What else can we say about this game? If you want, I can go into the depth of it, like the basically the lore, or we can just wait next week. Yeah, wait till next week for any of the lore or anything like that. Just kind of give a basic summary of the game is what we okay, want. Okay, basic summary as... Who's jacking off with a sander over there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're trying to grind your own penis off? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Banjo, are you okay? Because <laughs> that's all I hear. <laughs> unclean! Unclean! <laughs> to us, I didn't realize you could hear me. Yeah, what are you doing? Are you sanding your own shoes? Are you? What are you doing over there? Are you sanding your own shoes? No, sanding my own testicles. 
<laughs> what? Sanding my testicles. Why are you sending your testicles down? Okay, throughout this game, you'll have different elements to tackle. But funny enough, those elements don't have advantages or disadvantages against each other. It's just three types of data that element each other. There's data, virus, and vaccine. Rock, paper, scissors? Pretty much. All right. Like, uh, I'd say one of SARS had Guruman as virus, Palmon's vaccine, and Terriermon's data for Sweet. Like, so yeah, they counterbalance each other, but as you like digivolve into different ones, or like whatever digivolution tree you choose, uh, your type could actually change. Uh, so there's two games in this series, um, and they take place simultaneously. One, uh, you play as a hacker trying to hack the Pentagon and get nuclear codes, and the other one you're trying to play as a detective to figure out who stole your rice pudding. So and it's kind of happening in, in correlation with each other, right? Please tell me that's the actual plot. But no, uh, basically you become a cyber sleuth because you're... It's kind of like a Sword Art Online thing. The first game, it's weird. So it used to be a hentai. 100%. Hell yeah. Well, so... you type in Angel Woman and not get tits and see if it's not a hentai. How do you spell it? A N G E W O M O N. I just get a picture of a woman. <laughs> like, Shut not up. a Digimon, just an actual woman. Oh, okay. I remember this one. Have you guys seen the uh, Rule 34 speedruns? No. They type in a name of a popular character and then they go through and try to pull up their Rule 34. Of- uh, in record time. Oh god, Geshin Impact is going to be fucked. Now that we have an understanding of what the game is, I guess our predictions are, well, first, we should talk about which out of the two we are going to play. Are we going to play as the detective or are we going to play as the hacker? Which is the first one? Is the detective right? Yeah. I am looking really forward to playing this because, like I had said before, I my intelligence when it comes to Digimon is that of a box of rocks. And I know nothing when it comes to it. And Logan is super into it. And I want to be on his level, which I don't think I'll ever be. But I'm going to try my damnedest. I've already got maybe an hour into the game. And I actually picked Terrier Mon. So I'm excited to kind of pick it back up and reignite my uh, passion for Digimon that I once had as a kid. So I'm excited to, to get back into it and see what it's like. And from what I understand, it's going to be a bit more challenging than something like Pokemon. So Oh yeah, because you have to save, or when you die, you go back to your previous save state. Oof. Since you're choosing Terriermon and you want to start getting back into it, I highly recommend you start with the third season of Digimon, just because uh, Digimon Tamers is actually really fucking dark. <laughs> <laughs> but just because uh, one of the protagonists, Henry, has a Terriermon, and it's so fucking sassy. Oh my god, Terriermon killed a man! Digimon Digital Monsters. What the fuck? Alright. <laughs> Alright. I gave up. I gave up trying, really. <laughs> so, uh, Banjo, why have we been gone for so long? I've been waiting for the Joysticks and Lunatics podcast to be uploaded for... Uh, an entire month almost, and I haven't gotten my fix. Uh, what happened? Well, it's I Logan's died. Fault. You died. Well, and then not. it took me forever to respawn <laughs> because I was lagging so bad. Okay. No, actually, um, the reason why that this whole thing has been kind of on a hiatus is unfortunately, this is a hobby right now. This is, uh, unfortunately, this is something that we do as a hobby. And therefore, you know, it's not something that is a, a job by any means. I mean, it is a job in in retrospect, but it's ultimately uh, not I don't want to say it's not on the high priority list because it is. It's just unfortunately life gets in the way with things. And with my particular job, my profession, this is the type of time of year 
where things get really cranked up in terms of busyness. And I had unfortunately had to put some things on the back burner while I was working 13 hour days, seven days a week. And not so much on the weekends. I was working like a little less hours, but I was still working seven days a week and having like no downtime and no ability to actually put forth my attention to a video game for us to, uh, you know, review here on the podcast. And on top of that, it wasn't just that, you know, it's also the holiday season. So I'm going every which way on any of the time that I actually have off, uh, trying to spend time with family, trying to get last minute Christmas shopping done. And just, it's been an incredibly busy, incredibly hectic fever dream of a month for me. So due to that, it's just, unfortunately, this had to be put a little on the side, but things seem to be calming down a little bit. They might ramp up a bit, but I'm definitely going to be forcing more of my free time into playing the games that we want to review on this podcast and making time to make sure that the recording is done and the editing gets taken care of. So don't worry, there shouldn't be another hiatus for a while. And if there is, we will make sure to let everybody know ahead of time. Sorry that things got a little crazy there and we just kind of disappeared off the map. We need to be a little bit better with communication. Maybe we can make mention of these things on our Facebook page and our Twitter page when we know these things are going to happen. So there is no question as to whether or not we'll be back. Um, Logan dropped the ball on that one big time. So make sure to, you know, yell at him about that. You took a lot of the blame, but in all honesty, uh, everyone needed a break. Well, I had work that was coming in as well. There was a lot that was going on, especially the holidays. I had a ton of work that I needed to get done. It was actually kind of finals week for me for college. I just really didn't have any time either. But, you know, obviously we still want to do this podcast and we're all in this to get everything rolling again and get everything created and put out for people that listen to us. Heck yeah, dude. It's a brand new year. And yeah, it's Logan's fault. (laughs) (laughs) It's not Logan's fault. He is actually the one person that isn't to blame for this. It's it's entirely mine. And I'm not going to say it's Banjo's fault, but it's entirely my fault. No, it's not. It it has a lot to do with me as well. But it's a new year. We're going to ring in this new year. It's starting strong. We're going to be back to our regular scheduled schedule. (laughs) You can definitely be sure that there will be more to come from us. So thank you all. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Hurry the fuck up. I got to pee. Thank you all so much for listening. It is a joy as always and for sticking with us, especially through this hiatus and everything. And if you got this far, good job. We really appreciate uh, you guys listening to us, sticking around here, being buddies, being our friends. And uh, we will definitely be seeing you in the next one, which will definitely be another one. Yeah. So we plan on getting our episodes out uh, the usual time every Friday and obviously uh, the next week we will have the Digimon episode recorded and released. But yeah, definitely uh, check us out. You can go to the joysticks and lunatics.com website where you can find links to all of our social media and uh, links to our YouTube channel as well, where things will eventually be posted on there. Uh, Different gameplay videos and things like that. Things like peaches licking a Nintendo switch cartridge. That's always good to watch. You can find all that kind of content. We also release some videos of us playing games together. on. Yeah, true that. There will definitely be more content on the YouTube channel, so you guys can stick around on there to see more of the stuff. If you want to see more of us outside of the podcast, I don't know why you would want to, but you can. And uh, listen to us anywhere you get your podcasts. Like literally, like anywhere, any place, all the places you listen to it. Because we've got Apple Podcasts now. You do. We do. You want it on Apple? You got it. You want it on Google? You got it. You want it on Stitcher? You got it. You want it from that old man that only wears a trench coat that lives in the sewers? You got it. But not on Pornhub. 
Not not on Pornhub. Not yet. They rejected our application. But we could always try an OnlyFans where we just sit naked at our computers. It's not a bad idea. I always <laughs> sit naked at, at the computer. Anytime we record or play video games together. What do you think I'm doing? You think I'm wearing pants here? No, you're just butt naked with your like little heater at your feet. Exactly. Like, that's been every single podcast. Did you guys not know that? That you have your heater, your electric heater, keeping your feetsies warm? No, my balls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's all there is uh, for this one. Thank you again for sticking with us on this whole thing. We'll be back uh, next Friday with some Digimon Cyber Sleuth. And then uh, we will have a funny little discussion about snakes wearing hats you could teach us a little bit about the history of the game too oh yeah that too we should probably do that as well all right talk to you guys uh later bye guys thanks for listening jesus i just smashed my foot into my computer desk (laughs) was it good for you